All right, we're going to get started here in just a second. What did you say, Mike? I don't know. I didn't open it yet because I had to get on the team call. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll open it when I when, after I get on the team call. I had a present on my doorstep. I think I've been blind. Do you guys have that, like, going around in your neighborhoods being blind, where they're just dropping off little gift bags with, like, candy and wine or alcohol paraphernalia? <laughs> Yeah. Cool. I think I think I've been wined, but I was literally trying to get on this call, so I just set it on the dining room. I'll open it in a minute. Yeah, Sherry got wined. I got tiara I had the tiara Sherry. Uh -huh. That's the one you make them sound to be. Yeah. I heard you. He's very calm. No. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Yeah, I got my butt. Oh, all right, you guys. Thank you for tuning in to the team call. I know we are all busy and have lots of things going on. So I appreciate that you carve this time weekly out of your schedule. As of right now, I plan on continuing having it at 7 p.m. Eastern time, just because um, 8.30 is late for this granny. I'm going to be in bed by that time uh, this week. So Moving it to uh, seven, since we're all still semi-quarantined, has uh, really been working out. But uh, let me know if you don't have, if this isn't a good time for you. It's always on playback. I try to save the recordings to our YouTube page, just so you know that it's there. Um, I've had a few, uh, we've had a lot of new girls join the squad over the last 45 days. 125 newbies already. And um, so a lot of the content that I've been rolling out as part of these team calls is um, more related to um, helping you establish your business and learn the ropes. Last week we talked about the kind of things that you should be posting on your Facebook wall and how to balance out your posting. So if that's something that you've been struggling with, like knowing what to post and how to post, you can watch last week's call. I think I saved that one, and um, and that'll give you some information. This week, I wanted to talk a little bit about photos, videos, and editing, because I think that might be another area where many new presenters specifically feel like they struggle, and I know um, I, I've refined that process over my last five years of taking selfies and getting really good at it, so I thought this week I would share with you some of my tips and tricks for doing videos, Facebook Lives, and selfies so that you feel more empowered and you can get on the ball and we're not holding you up from being successful. So a couple of things. The first thing that I want to talk about is lighting. Lighting is everything when it comes to your selfies and your videos. Um, I'm right now sitting in front of a window and I do believe that natural light is going to be your best avenue for taking selfies. And one of my favorite things to do is to stand in front of the curtain. So I'll go to the window and I'll pull the curtain around behind me like I'm going into a magic booth and it creates an instant backdrop. So then you don't have to worry about all the crap you got on your countertops because you've got your, your drapes hanging around back behind you and it kind of creates a blank background which is gonna be beneficial if you like to add any kind of text or if you like to make like uh, quotes on it. Some people like to take their selfies and make inspirational quotes. So I like to just pull my camera, my blind right around behind me and then I've got that fresh light. You don't want the light shining directly through the window. You want the ambient light, meaning the sun is on this side of my house. So it's light enough that it's showing on my face, but it's not a direct cast because that's going to wash out all of your colors. 
a next step up if you're still on a budget but you want to have some good lighting or if you're somebody that sleeps all day because you're a nighttime nurse and you're trying to do your selfies and your lives in the evening when there's no more daylight you can invest in a few different things to help boost your lighting situation uh, one of them is a small little ring light it's a clip on it's perfect for selfies like just like quick selfies you're not going to get amazing clarity and lighting out of it but um, you can get them on Amazon for like ten dollars so it's a really nice like if you're out and about what I like to use the little clip on for because it fits perfectly in my purse is when I go to restaurants and I'm that woman that's taking a picture of all my food I turn it around and I'm like yeah, I got this little light it's perfect for taking pictures of like uh, small things and, and on, on in a pinch it works out really good one of my favorite things to do as well is I actually just snapped this off when I was trying to pull it out. This is an eight inch ring light. It's got a USB port, so it'll plug into any charger cable uh, box that you have. We call them blocks, you know, what your, your phone cord goes in. Or you can put it on your laptop or even a portable charger. And I like this one because it's got a clamp. So with the clamp, I can put it anywhere. I can clamp it on this right here. I can pl I can clamp it onto my laptop. I, I, I can clamp it onto my lamp post. I can move it anywhere I want and that gives me a little bit of freedom because it's not um, connected to an, an outlet. I don't have to plug it into the wall. Um, my other ring light that I have does have to be plugged into the wall. So it's bigger. It's a 16 inch ring light. It's dimmable. It's got settings. So that's really nice that you can change the settings, but it is a, a wall plug in. So I am limited to where I can use it because I have to have an outlet accessible. So that's why I like this one. And you can get this one on Amazon for about $30. So it's a little bit of a more bigger investment than the $10 clip on, but you get a lot more bang for your buck and a lot more versatility. I wanted to bring one other thing and I, I don't know where it is, but this um, next uh, thing that I'm going to tell you about is super helpful. It's um, you get them either at Marshall's or at Walmart and they're a suction cup GPS holder. So you won't find them in the photography section. You're going to find them where like the car accessories are, but it's an, a, it's a suction cup. And why that's great is because you can put it uh, you can hold your phone in the GPS holder, but then suction cup your phone anywhere you need. So if you're using a window and let's just say for today, your mobile office or your portable office is in your son's room, or it's, you know, you're at, a, at the beach and you want to be able to record and you're at the, at the window, then you can just move that suction cup anywhere. There's a glass surface. It also works in your car. If you're going to do like, you know, a series in your car. So it's, ten dollars i'm giving you a lot of like the cheaper things that you can get for a small amount of money you can invest so the gps suction cup is really valuable and and i like the one with the movable arm so there's one that's a ball and socket holder where you basically just take the phone holder and put it into a socket and it rolls like a ball and socket around and round but i prefer the one with the um, movable arm so it kind of hangs down and then you can adjust it left right up down tilt forward all right so those are a few of the things and what I'll do um, is after this I will link um, all of like like an Amazon shopping cart for you guys so that if there's any of these things that you would like to purchase to help up your selfie game then you can do that um, and so lighting's good and how to position your phone is good when you are taking selfies, specifically if you're trying to take makeup selfies, I would advocate go filter free because I think it's important for you to demonstrate the true results that you're getting out of the makeup. And when you start adding filters and Photoshop, you lose the integrity of the results and you might have customers that say, well, it didn't look like that on me. Well, that's because I Photoshop myself. All right, so when I take makeup photos, like a picture of my lashes, or I'm trying to show my eyeshadow, I try to eliminate any filtering at, at all possible because I want my, my customers to feel like they're getting exactly what I showed them in my photos. But I use filters for everything else. <laughs> 
So I mean, I don't want to shame filters and I don't want you to feel bad if you like filters because I like filters too. But just on the makeup side, just since we're selling something, you want it to be true to color as best as possible. And the way you make it true to color is by getting good lighting. One of my favorite things to do when I'm taking selfies, um, it's hard to know your angle in the beginning. You're going to want to imagine a clock, 12, 1, 2, 3, Four and go around the clock and take a, a bunch at, in the beginning and that's going to help you learn what your angle is because we all have an angle. I have a good side and then I have a lazy side and I don't know what, what this side of my face is doing. I don't know what God was thinking when he did this side of my face, but it's lazy. The eyebrow, everything is lazy. So I have a good side and I always take my pictures on the good side. The only way for you to know what your good side is, is to take a bunch and to figure that out. And I recommend going around the clock. One, two, three, four, five, six, you know, clock. You're smart, you know. Then if you realize, okay, I got some good angles, but I'm not really sure. Or if you want to take product photos where you're holding everything like this, how do you do that, right? Are you going to, do you have somebody with you all the time that's going to take your, do you have a personal photographer that's going to follow you around? No. So what I recommend doing then is flipping it to video mode and then use your camera holder, turn it on video mode, take an entire video of you doing the things that you want to do, holding your products, looking all excited or whatever, then go back to that video and screen grab it. And then you've got a picture that didn't require somebody else. Cause my husband, bless his heart, he'll take 10 photos for me, but they're all just a little bit off, you know, like he, he doesn't see my vision when he's taking pictures for me. So it's really nice that I can be in control and, and then I just take a video. And then when I see that the angle is exactly what I want, I hold. So when I go back to the video, I've got that pause where I can screen grab it and then save. Okay. Another thing with my photos is I take a bunch, I bulk them, and then I save them for later. So I'll take a picture with one finger up, with two fingers. I'll take a picture holding my hand out like this because then I can add a product like I'm holding it like that, you know? So I take a bunch like that and I save them for later. So this is going to come in handy when you're really busy and you don't have time or you haven't done your makeup in three to three weeks because hashtag coronavirus. It's going to be really great to have inventory of photos that you've saved that you can regurgitate later. You're going to thank me for that tip for sure. I go back to my old photos all the time and I reuse them. Nobody knows. Half the people that are my friends now weren't my friends five years ago. They did not see that photo. So it's fine. So that's another tip. When it comes to editing or videos, if you want to make the quick like one minute videos or things like that, I have a few apps that I like to use and I just want to share those with you guys if you're Apple users. Um, my favorite video editing app is called Video Shop. It allows you to take several different small video clips and import them. You can splice them up. So let's just say um, you want to trim them down so that they're not like so long and you just want to get the meat of the video, that one little part of you putting on your eyeshadow or whatever. So you can trim down each individual video or you can splice a video in the middle and, and put something else in. Like let's just say you wanted to insert a picture of the product that you're using while you're doing your eyeshadow. You could do that and splice it up. You can also speed up the video. So to really concentrate it down into a short video, especially if you're using TikTok or you're using um, Instagram, they have limits on how long their videos can be anyway. So you might want to keep them short. Think of your videos as commercials. Nobody's watching really long commercials. They get tired of it. So you want it to have high energy. You want it to move quickly and you want it to be something that is, that is engaging the people to watch it and maybe even watch it a second time. All right. I'm, I'm throwing down a lot of tips and tricks. So I, I will open it up for questions here in a minute. Um, so video shop is my favorite video editing app. Uh, a lot of people like the iMovie or whatever it's called. I did not find that one to be as user friendly as Video Shop. So that's just my personal favorite. 
Another one of my favorites for putting text, do you ever see someone with a, a beautiful selfie and then they've got an inspirational quote like across their face and their face is blurred out, but the quote has a, a combination of different fonts that looks really nice. You don't have to be a fontologist, if that's a word. You don't have to know how to mix and match sans, you know, sans times and Roman time. You don't have to know any of that if you have this app called Word Swag. So Word Swag, you just type in your text and then it gives you options. It'll like put the words together and reframe them in a beautiful way. And you just kind of like go until you pick the one that looks like you like it the most, all right? I think for Word Swag, it ha they have a free version, but the free version has the little watermark at the bottom. And then if you pay, I think it was like $3.99, $3.99. I got the premium version, which had more font options and also did not have that um, that watermark at the bottom, which I, I appreciate. I don't want that watermark on there. That's a distraction. I want to I want a clean image, you know. So the other app that I absolutely love, this one's great for collages. If you want, if you like to make several different uh, pictures in one is called Moldive, M-O-L-D-I-V. M-O-L-D-I-V. And it also has uh, the ability to edit your photos. You, It has um, filters that you can apply. You can put text on there. You can change the coloring. Uh, it's got all kinds of different features. It's very user friendly and you can make collages. It's also got this feature, which I think is really cool for your stories. I don't know if you're going to be able to, to see this. Where's my camera thing? It's the magazine portion of it. So it's all of these different um, layouts that you can use and then you just pop your photos into it and it immediately elevates the quality of the content that you're creating and putting out there. And, and this one specifically, this magazine version, like if I just open up this one, so you can see, oh, where's my screen? So it's black, but then each one of these photos is gonna be shaped like the triangle or whatever shape that is, and it's gonna crop it out with the black thing around it. So then when you put it in your story, it's just something like, it just catches your eye a little bit. You know, just how do you elevate the quality of your content? It's by adding some of these extra little features. Okay. I have one more, um, one more iPhone tip for you guys. One of my favorite things to do is um, that a lot of people ask me about is how to magnify one little thing on your on your photo. You know how it like pops out in a little bubble. If you take a screenshot, uh, if you take a screenshot, so I just took a screenshot. I'm gonna open my screenshot and then I'm gonna go to the little plus sign right here in the bottom left hand corner, this little plus sign. And then in that little plus sign, there's a button called magnifier. If you click the magnifier, then it will create a little, all right, sorry. Then it'll create a little magnifier button so that you can choose something to magnify. Now do you see how my dog is like now a lot bigger in the picture? That would be beneficial for like lash pictures. You know, if you want to show your eyelashes and you would you would put the little magnifier on there and it would increase where you're what, what they can see when it comes to your lashes, especially if you're like me, part of the itty bitty lash committee. So that's a really cool shortcut on your phone that's uh that I I I like that. I just use that a lot. Okay. What else did I want to say? Uh, okay, I think that let's open it up for questions. And I think there was one more thing I wanted to talk about, but I having a brain freeze. So um, let's open this up for questions. How are you guys feeling about your selfies, your photos and getting your content out there? Tashina. So with the videos, I tried to do, like I, I've recorded myself before, just putting on my makeup, but I always, when I go back and watch the video, I don't see anything that I can, that I'd want to splice together because I, I don't know, I've always feel uncomfortable about it. 
is there any tips on when you are recording videos to make like smaller videos or even like TikToks where you're not speaking that would be helpful? When I like to take my selfies uh, or when I like to make my videos, I think about the angle that is going to best serve what I'm showing, what I'm demoing. So specifically when it comes to my eyes, I always have my camera up and down. Why? Because that angle is going to shine down on my eyelids. I almost always, when I'm splicing together my videos, I put the eyeshadow on and then I take a video that makes it look like I'm putting the eyeshadow on. So I, I put the color on or I'll say, like, I'll tap my brush on the little, like the little color, right? So that they can see that that's the color. And then off camera, I'll put it on and then I'll take like a, a five second recording of me just going over it a couple extra times in the spot where I want it to be. So this way you don't feel like you're going to screw it up because you've already put the makeup in the right place and it, the color's already the way you want it to be. And then I'm basically just showing them where I'm not showing them me do it. Does that make sense? So I cut out my, my actual process and I just do like little demos of where it goes. You might find that to be a little bit easier. Okay. So think about turning your phone down towards your eyes that's going to that's going to record the what what do you want them to see your eyelid right but if your camera's down here that's going upward it's going to make your eye your real estate for your eyelid look smaller up this way it's going to make it look bigger but when i'm doing a mascara video i don't go up because this is one of the things that you're going to have to understand about the anatomy of your lashes the, the hair follicles of your lashes, I'm going to get real deep on you guys real quick. I'm sorry, data dumping. The anatomy of your lash follicles, everyone's is different. Now, some people's lashes grow down, like, and, they, and they're awesome because they flutter down like snuffleupagus. So when they take an eyes closed picture, their eyelashes look like snuffleupagus. They're so long, right? They just swoop on down. Some people's eyelashes go straight out and they're, they're the ones that, you know, they might want to crimp them or whatever. Other people have eyelashes that are upward turned naturally. So you need to pay attention to what your lash anatomy is because where you take your pictures is going to be different than where I take my pictures. Because my natural lashes curl up, anytime I try to do the looking down with my lashes, it looks like I have zero lashes. No matter what angle I try, it just doesn't work for me. But because my lashes turn upward, if I pull my phone down a a little bit it increases the real estate of the way that you can see the lash does that make sense because mine naturally turn up so if I'm taking my picture up here you're not going to see the lash but if I take my picture from down here you're going to see that whole lash vice versa if your lashes go down and you're taking a picture from down here it's going to look like nothing but from here it's going to look like something so that's something you're going to have to practice and pay attention to when you're just looking at your eyelashes straight out of the shower like with no product on them you just washed your face and what is the natural direction of your lashes just get up in there check it out where are they going are they going down out or up you sh you'll be able to tell pretty quickly and then you will want to adjust the way you take your lash, lash pictures based on the direction that your lashes grow. So each one of those things is a little bit different, but like if I'm, if I'm showing contouring, you'll see me, I'm turned this way almost the entire time because I want them to see where I'm contouring. I'm not looking straight on because you can't see this area right? That almost disappears. You can't even see where my pinky nail is. So the entire video is me looking to the side and showing that. You see what I mean? You're going to, depending on the product that you're showing, the angle will be different is what I'm trying to say. I hope that was helpful. It was. Yes, Jenny. Okay, so I noticed that the apps you're using are for iPhones. Will they work for Android as well, or is there apps comparable to those for an Android? Um, there are a 
few that are crossovers that you would be able to use. I'm not sure what they are. I think one of them is called Pick Jointer, J-O-I-N-T-E-R. Okay. And what I would recommend is it, if, if any of the ones that I suggested, you can't find them in your app store, is, um, is to go to where they have the different editing apps for photos and videos and read the reviews and see what people are saying because they're, they'll usually be pretty good. And if there's anybody on here that doesn't use Apple that has some suggestions, speak now or forever hold your peas. Nancy, or were you, do you use an iPhone? You're muted, babe. Hold on, I'm gonna, go ahead. I have iPhone, but oh, April, okay. has, April has an Android, I believe. Yeah, April, what do you use for your photos? Um, let me, hold on, let me shut this and I'll tell you. I use, scroll here, um, to make little videos using my pictures like because i am so bad at splicing videos it's unbelievable i use something called mo show where you can take your still pictures and they make it into a video for you okay. um i use tech swag for those pictures uh like you're saying with the words over top of your face with like the motivational quotes and stuff like that i use tech okay. swag I use the over app. It's just a big yellow like square with an with a white O in it. I use um PixMonkey, Pick Collage. Um I have like the screen recorder app here. But that's about all I really use is over, pick collage, tech swag, mo show. Cool. So I'll make um I'll make a post in the in the Glam Squad after this with a link to all of the different things that I suggested, and you guys can check it out. I I am in no way telling you to buy all of these things, but I would say that if you're ready to invest in your business, even like one of the lighting things and the arm to hold your phone is going to help you a lot in creating quality content, and um. And again, it's a tax write-off, so it is an investment to your business, and it's something that's going to be valuable if you really want to start um, operating on a higher frequency when it comes to your business. Um, the thought popped into my head while I was talking, and then just like that, it popped up. Why? Why? Um, anyone else have any other questions? I'm going to try to remember what I was thinking. You have to unmute yourself. Yes, Laura. Hi, and this is actually more of a comment. Um, is anybody on this call um, one of the people that was interested in knowing what the latest presenter kit looks like? Oh, yeah. Show us what you got in your kit or tell us what you got in the kit. Okay, so um. If you turn it over to me, I can show you. Yeah, here, I'll make you a host and then you can- Actually, you know what, I'll, um, I'll pull up the big pictures. Sorry, it was my, de my desktop too. So I'd say like the biggest change that I noticed right out the way is, um, sorry, it's kind of taken a while to open. Um, well, I'll just talk you through it because it's a little slow to open, but the box um, doesn't have the bottom drawer anymore. So it, it still flips back. It still has, says, hello, gorgeous. I'll hit this the second picture. Um, but I'm trying to think of which one kind of shows it. Um, but it has this really cool feature that I've never seen before on um, uh, this. Now the... Um, the mascaras and now we have the serum here which actually fits in the case so that's nice but i've never seen one with the plastic over it so it's encased in a, a small in a plastic like box now so it doesn't you know they come uh, packed really nicely so they're not like jiggling around in the kit 
Um, so I thought that was kind of a nice feature. And it's, you know, it's back to two epics, the 4D and the um, Flash Serum. I had uh, someone get three epics last time, and it, it was like a brown and the waterproof and the um, regular. And so it just looked, it was just a little weird, but, um, you know, the customer didn't really know the difference. Now, my customer is going to be, un uh, unfortunately, upset about some of what I'm about to show you now. This, this kit, she really wanted like some of the like the, the masks and like she did get a foundation. Um, I'll open up a couple of these because they're kind of dark, but you get the lavender um, toning spritz. Um, this is actually the protecting veil with the like SPF in it. You still get your two face powders. Um, this is a liquid. I think this is a little liquid powder. Um, the lipstick. Um, you still get a, an opulence. Um, Lipstick, you get a, a splash one, um, yeah, yeah, and then you get the um, sh shadow brush. I forget what it's called. The curve, not the curved shadow brush, but anyway, the um, fluffy shadow brush, brush or something like that. And these, uh, these are the makeup removers, and you still get the um, the four pack of shadows along with the um, the holder or whatever. Let me see if um, I tried to get one that was a little less dark. So overall, it's kind of back to the way it was. It just so happens that this one woman really specifically talked a lot about really wanting the mask. So I ordered her one um, just just in case she flips out. But I'd say it's getting back to back to where it should be. Good. There, there's just a few things that are a little bit different. But yeah. I, I think the biggest thing that's different is that like the, is the box itself. Um, I do think the mascara thing is great. But I do kind of miss the, the, the like, the, if that, there was a little bit of, um, I don't know, excitement and pulling out the bottom drawer. <laughs> so you lose that little element, but, you know, um, it, it, it works. Cool. Well, um, you know, it'll continue to level out as they are able to receive the inventory. They said um, I, in one of the videos that I watched that um, while our products are not made in China, some of the packaging products that we use come from China. So our ingredients, our products are, are made here, but like the box that it came in came from China. And the because of everything that's going on, it's um, 10 times more expensive for shipping. So if you had made a budget for $2,000 to have this product shipped, it's now $20,000 to have those products shipped. And the company is still paying for that. They're still making sure it's happening, it, but it's taking freaking forever. Yeah. It's twenty thousand dollars instead of two thousand dollars, and it's and it's taking ten times longer than it was before because of all of the safety precautions of things coming in and out of that country. Yeah. So I noticed that somebody put something about um, these uh, samples. Um, yeah, there were no there, uh, there's no mass samples unfortunately, but I bought some, so I'm gonna throw those into the kit. Um, and I've actually only ever in my life seen one kit that had the foundation sample. I've, I've never seen it again. It was like a one time thing. <laughs> but, I, you know, my original one didn't have it. Uh, the friend, it was, oh, I think my sister in law, Sarah, had the foundation example. Okay. Well, let's keep everybody posted. If you took some pictures, I'd love for you to post that into the group so that everyone yeah, can kind of see and you can manage the expectations of the people that are signing up with the kit. I think in the end, um, it's a good problem to have. I would rather have a company that is exploding with 100,000 people signing up in the last 40, 000, uh, 45 days than a company that can't get people to sign up. And I would rather work for a company that's pushing out millions of dollars worth of products in the last couple of months than a company where I have products that I can't move. So in, I know it feels hard, but this is what growth feels like. It's it it's big. It's hard. We're, we're going to have to come overcome hurdles. So just remember that every time you come up against these, it's a sign of growth. It's a good problem to have. Can I ask you about next month? And you know, we're I know we're rolling out you know um, many new products. Is it going to be an entirely new box, 
or is it going to be? It they could be. I I mean, it really just depends on how many boxes they had printed originally. With a hundred, okay. that's why they've already moved to a new box. Is because we've had a hundred thousand people sign up, and they order so many, and then once those are gone, they have to order. You know, they have to make yeah. something else. So it is always changing. Usually. In my experience over five years, it's about every three months they make a change. And yeah. that's good because it keeps people like wanting to like yeah. either get it now or you're stuck with what comes next. Who knows what it's going to look like next. Right. Um, but I I've noticed about every three months they make some changes to the kit. Yeah. And at least there wasn't any like duplication of products. There was a lot of variety. Um, it was a little weird with the three epics, but they've changed, they've fixed that and everything was unique. It's not like there was any duplicate, um, you know, items. So cool. Yeah. All right, you guys, I'm excited to see the content that you're creating. Remember that you are your storefront. So more than anything, I want to see your beautiful faces in these photos. I want to see you showing up as the product of your product because your network knows you. While I don't mind you using any of my photos ever, they don't know me from a hole in the wall. So use them. But the sooner you can start incorporating you into your brand, you'll start to feel more traction. You'll start to get more results because people want to see how it's working for you. Remember, you are your brand. All right. I love you all so much. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And I will see you on the next team call. <laughs> ah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.